Section eight of Dreams by Olive Schreiner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Noel Badrian. Chapter eleven. The sunlight lay across my bed. Part one. In the dark one night, I lay upon my bed. I heard the policeman's feet beat on the pavement. I heard the wheels of carriages roll home from houses of entertainment. I heard a woman's laugh below my window. And then I fell asleep. And in the dark I dreamt a dream. I dreamt God took my soul to hell. Hell was a fair place. The water of the lake was blue. I said to God, I like this place. God said, I dost thou birds sang turf came to the water edge and trees grew from it away off among the trees i saw beautiful women walking their clothes were of many delicate colours and clung to them and they were tall and graceful and had yellow hair their robes trailed over the grass they glided in and out among the trees and over their heads hung yellow fruit like large pears of melted gold i said it is very fair i would go up and taste the god said wait and after a while i noticed a very fair woman pass she looked this way and that and drew down a branch and it seemed she kissed the fruit upon it softly and went on her way and her dress made no rustle as she passed over the grass and when I saw her no more, from among the stems came another woman, fair as she had been, in a delicate tinted robe. She looked this way and that. When she saw no one there, she drew down the fruit, and when she had looked over it to find a place, she put her mouth to it softly, and went away. And I saw other and other women come, making no noise, and they glided away also over the grass. And I said to God, What are they doing? God said, They are poisoning. And I said, How? God said, They touch it with their lips. When they have made a tiny wound in it with their foreteeth, they set in it that which is under their tongues. They close it with their lips, that no man may see the place, and pass on. I said to God, Why do they do it? God said, That another may not eat. I said to God, But if they poison all, then none dare eat. What do they gain? God said, Nothing. I said, Are they not afraid they themselves may bite where another has bitten? God said, They are afraid. In hell all men fear. He called me further, and the water of the lake seemed less blue. Then to the right among the trees were men working, and I said to God, I should like to go and work with them. Hell must be a very fruitful place, the grass is so green. God said, Nothing grows in the garden they are making. We stood looking, and I saw them working among the bushes, digging holes. But in them they set nothing, and when they had covered them with sticks and earth, each went away off and sat behind the bushes watching. And I noticed that as each walked, he set his foot down carefully, looking where he trod. I said to God, What are they doing? God said, Making pitfalls into which their fellows may sink. I said to God, Why do they do it? God said, because each thinks that when his brother falls, he will rise. I said to God, How will he rise? God said, He will not rise. And I saw their eyes gleam from behind the bushes. I said to God, Are these men sane? God said, They are not sane. There is no sane man in hell and he told me to come further. And I looked where I trod. 
and we came where hell opened into a plain and a great house stood there marble pillars upheld the roof and white marble steps led up to it the wind of heaven blew through it only at the back hung a thick curtain fair men and women there feasted at long tables they danced and i saw the robes of women flutter in the air and heard the laugh of strong men what they feasted with was wine they drew it from large jars which stood somewhat in the background and i saw the wine sparkle as they drew it and i said to god i should like to go up and drink and god said wait and i saw men coming into the banquet house they came in from the back and lifted the corner of the curtain at the side and crept in quickly and they let the curtain fall behind them they bore great jars they could hardly carry and the men and women crowded round them and the newcomers opened their jars and gave them of the wine to drink and i saw that the women drank even more greedily than the men and when others had well drunken they set the jars among the old ones beside the wall and took their place at the table and i saw that some of the jars were very old and mildewed and dusty but others had still drops of new must on them and shone from the furnace and i said to god what is that for amid the sound of the singing and over the dancing of feet and over the laughing across the wine cups i heard a cry and god said stand away off and he took me where i saw both sides of the curtain behind the house was the wine press where the wine was made i saw the grapes crushed and i heard them cry i said do not they on the other side hear it god said the curtain is thick they are feasting and i said but the men who came in last they saw god said they let the curtain fall behind them and they forget i said how came they by their jars of wine god said in the treading of the press these are they who came to the top they have climbed out over the edge and filled their jars from below and have gone into the house and i said and if they had fallen as they climbed god said they had been wine i stood away off watching in the sunshine and i shivered god lay in the sunshine watching too then there rose one among the feasters who said my brethren let us pray and all the men and women rose and strong men bowed their heads and mothers folded their little children's hands together and turned their faces upward to the roof and he who first had risen stood at the table head and stretched out both his hands and his beard was long and white and his sleeves and his beard had been dipped in wine and because the sleeves were wide and full they held much wine and it dropped down upon the floor and he cried my brothers and my sisters let us pray and all the men and women answered let us pray he cried for this fair banquet house we thank thee lord and all the men and women said we thank thee lord thine is this house dear lord thine is this house for us hast thou made it for us o oh, fill our jars with wine dear lord our jars with wine give peace and plenty in our time dear lord peace and plenty in our time i said to god whom is it they are talking to god said do i know whom they speak of and i saw they were looking up at the roof but out in the sunshine god lay dear lord dear lord our children's children lord shall rise and call thee blessed our children's children lord i said to god the grapes are crying god said still i hear them 
shall call thee blessed shall call thee blessed pour forth more wine upon us lord more wine more wine more wine 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 dear lord then men and women sat down and the feast went on and mothers poured out wine and fed their little children with it and men held up the cup to women's lips and cried beloved drink and women filled their lovers flagons and held them up and yet the feast went on and after a while i looked and i saw the curtain that hung behind the house moving i said to god is it a wind god said a wind and it seemed to me that against the curtain i saw pressed the forms of men and women and after a while the feasters saw it move and they whispered one to another then some rose and gathered the most worn-out cups and into them they put what was left at the bottom of other vessels mothers whispered to their children do not drink all save a little drop when you have drunk and when they had collected all the dregs they slipped the cups out under the bottom of the curtain without lifting it and after a while the curtain left off moving i said to god how is it so quiet he said they have gone away to drink it i said they drink it their own god said it comes from this side of the curtain and they are very thirsty then the feast went on and after a while i saw a small white hand slip in below the curtain's edge along the floor and it motioned towards the wine jars and i said to god why is that hand so bloodless and god said it is a wine-pressed hand and men saw it and started to their feet and women cried and ran to the great wine jars and threw their arms around them and cried ours our own our beloved and twined their long hair about them i said to god why are they frightened of that one small hand god answered because it is so white and men ran in a great company towards the curtain and struggled there i heard them strike upon the floor and when they moved away the curtain hung smooth and still and there was a small stain upon the floor and i said to god why do they not wash it out god said they cannot and they took small stones and put them down along the edge of the curtain to keep it down then the men and women sat down again at the tables and i said to god will those stones keep it down god said what think you i said if the wind blew god said if the wind blew and the feast went on and suddenly i cried to god if one should rise among them even of themselves and start up from the table and should cast away his cup and cry my brothers and my sisters stay what is it that we drink and with his sword should cut into the curtain and holding wide the fragments cry brothers sisters see it is not wine not wine not wine my brothers oh my sisters and he should overturn the god said be still see there i looked before the banquet house among the grass i saw a row of mounds flowers covered them and gilded marble stood at their heads i asked god what they were he answered they are the graves of those who rose up at the feast and cried and i asked god how they came there he said the men of the banquet house rose and cast them down backwards i said who buried them god said the men who cast them down i said how came it that they threw them down and then set marble over them god said because the bones cried out they covered them and among the grass and weeds i saw an unburied body lying and i asked god why it was god said because it was thrown down only yesterday 
in a little while when the flesh shall have fallen from its bones they will bury it also and plant flowers over it and still the feast went on men and women sat at the tables quaffing great bowls some rose and threw their arms about each other and danced and sang they pledged each other in the wine and kissed each other's blood-red lips higher and higher grew the revels men when they had drunk till they could no longer threw what was left in their glasses up to the roof and let it fall back in cascades women dyed their children's garments in the wine and fed them on it till their tiny mouths were red sometimes as the dancers whirled they overturned a vessel and their garments were bespattered children sat upon the floor with great bowls of wine and swam rose leaves on it for boats they put their hands in the wine and blew large red bubbles and higher and higher grew the revels and wilder the dancing and louder and louder the singing but here and there among the revellers were those who did not revel i saw that at the tables here and there were men who sat with their elbows on the board and hands shading their eyes they looked into the wine cup beneath them and did not drink and when one touched them lightly on the shoulder bidding them to rise and dance and sing they started and then looked down and sat there watching the wine in the cup but they did not move and here and there i saw a woman sit apart the others danced and sang and fed their children but she sat silent with her head aside as though she listened her little children plucked her gown she did not see them she was listening to some sound but she did not stir the revels grew higher men drank till they could drink no longer and lay their heads upon the table sleeping heavily women who could dance no more leaned back on the benches with their heads against their lovers shoulders little children sick with wine lay down upon the edges of their mother's robes sometimes a man rose suddenly and as he staggered struck the tables and overthrew the benches some leaned upon the balustrade sick unto death here and there one rose who staggered to the wine jars and lay down beside them he turned the wine tap but sleep overcame him as he lay there and the wine ran out slowly the thin red stream ran across the white marble floor it reached the stone steps slowly 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 it trickled down from step to step from step to step then it sank into the earth a thin white smoke rose up from it i was silent i could not breathe but god called me to come further and after i had travelled for a while i came where on seven hills lay the ruins of a mighty banquet house larger and stronger than the one which i had seen standing i said to god what did the men who built it here god said they feasted i said on what god said on wine and i looked and it seemed to me that behind the ruins lay still a large circular hollow within the earth where a foot of the wine-press had stood i said to god how came it that this large house fell god said because the earth was sodden he called me to come further and at last we came upon a hill where blue waters played and white marble lay upon the earth i said to god what was here once god said a pleasure house i looked and at my feet great pillars lay i cried aloud for joy to god the marble blossoms god said ay twas a fairy house there has not been one like to it nor ever shall be the pillars and the porticoes blossomed and the wine cups were as gathered flowers on this side all the curtain was broidered with fair designs the stitching was of gold 
I said to God, how came it that it fell? God said, on the side of the winepress it was dark. And as we travelled, we came where lay a mighty ridge of sand, and a dark river ran there, and there rose two vast mounds. I said to God, they are very mighty. God said, I exceeding great. And I listened. God asked me what I was listening to. And I said, a sound of weeping, and I hear the sound of strokes, but I cannot tell whence it comes. God said, it is the echo of the winepress lingering still among the coping stones upon the mounds. A banquet house stood here. And he called me to come further. Upon a barren hillside where the soil was arid, God called me to stand still, and I looked around. God said, There was a feasting house here once upon a time. I said to God, I see no mark of any. God said, There was not left one stone upon another that has not been thrown down. And I looked round, and on the hillside was a lonely grave. I said to God, What lies there? He said, A vine truss bruised in the winepress. And at the head of the grave stood a cross, and on its foot lay a crown of thorns. And as I turned to go, I looked backward. The winepress and the banquet house were gone, but the grave yet stood. And when I came to the edge of a long ridge, there opened out before me a wide plain of sand. And when I looked downward, I saw great stones lie shattered, and the desert sand had half covered them over. I said to God, There is writing on them, but I cannot read it. And God blew aside the desert sand, and I read the writing, weighed in the balance and found but the last word was wanting. And I said to God, It was a banquet house? God said, Aye, a banquet house. I said, There was a wine press here? God said, There was a wine press. I asked no further question. I was very weary. I shaded my eyes with my hand and looked through the pink evening light. Far off across the sand I saw two figures standing, with wings upfolded high above their heads, and stern faces set, neither man nor beast. They looked out across the desert sand, watching, watching, watching. I did not ask God what they were, for I knew what the answer would be. And further, and yet further, in the evening light, I looked with my shaded eyes. Far off, where the sands were thick and heavy, I saw a solitary pillar standing. The crown had fallen, and the sand had buried it. On the broken pillar sat a grey owl of the desert, with folded wings, and in the evening light I saw the desert fox creep past it, trailing his brush across the sand. Further, yet further, as I looked across the desert, I saw the sand gathered into heaps as though it covered something. I cried to God, Oh, I am so weary. God said, You have seen only one half of hell. I said, I cannot see more. I am afraid of hell. In my own narrow little path I dare not walk because I think that one has dug a pitfall for me. And if I put my hand to take a fruit, I draw it back again, because I think it has been kissed already. If I look out across the plains, the mounds are burial heaps, and when I pass among the stones I hear them crying aloud. When I see men dancing I hear the time beaten with sobs, and their wine is living. Oh, I cannot bear hell. God said, Where will you go? I said, to the earth from which I came, it was better there. And God laughed at me, and I wondered why he laughed. God said, Come, and I will show you heaven. End of section 8
Section nine of Dreams by Olive Schreiner. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Noel Badrian. Chapter eleven. The sunlight lay across my bed. Part two. And partly I awoke. It was still and dark. The sound of the carriages had died in the street. The woman who laughed was gone and the policeman's tread was heard no more in the dark it seemed as if a great hand lay upon my heart and crushed it i tried to breathe and tossed from side to side and then again i fell asleep and dreamed god took me to the edge of that world it ended i looked down the gulf it seemed to me was fathomless and then I saw two bridges crossing it that both sloped upwards. I said to God, Is there no other way by which men cross it? God said, One. It rises far from here and slopes straight upwards. I asked God what the bridges' names were. God said, What matter for the names? Call them the good, the true, the beautiful, if you will you will yet not understand them. I asked God how it was I could not see the third. God said, It is seen only by those who climb it. I said, Do they all lead to one heaven? God said, All heaven is one. Nevertheless, some parts are higher than others. Those who reach the higher may always go down to rest in the lower but those in the lower may not have strength to climb to the higher nevertheless the light is all one and i saw over the bridge nearest me which was wider than the other countless footmarks go i asked god why so many went over it god said it slopes less deeply and leads to the first heaven and i saw that some of the footmarks were of feet returning I asked God how it was. He said, No man who has once entered heaven ever leaves it, but some, when they have gone half way, turn back, because they are afraid there is no land beyond. I said, Has none ever returned? God said, No, once in heaven, always in heaven. And God took me over. And when we came to one of the great doors, for heaven has more doors than one, and they are all open, the posts rose up so high on either side I could not see the top, nor indeed if there were any. And it seemed to me so wide that all hell could go in through it. I said to God, which is the larger, heaven or hell? God said, hell is as wide but heaven is deeper all hell could be engulfed in heaven but all heaven could not be engulfed in hell and we entered it was a still great land the mountains rose on every hand and there was a pale clear light and i saw it came from the rocks and stones i asked god how it was but god did not answer me I looked and wondered, for I had thought heaven would be otherwise, and after a while it began to grow brighter, as if the day were breaking, and I asked God if the sun were not going to rise. God said, No, we are coming to where the people are. And as we went on, it grew brighter and brighter, till it was burning day, and on the rock were flowers blooming, and trees blossomed at the roadside, and streams of water ran everywhere, and I heard the birds singing. I asked God where they were. God said, It is the people calling to one another. And when we came nearer, I saw them walking, and they shone as they walked. I asked God how it was they wore no covering. God said, because all their body gives the light, they dare not cover any part. And I asked God what they were doing. 
God said, shining on the plants that they may grow. And I saw that some were working in companies, and some alone, but most were in twos, sometimes two men and sometimes two women, but generally there was one man and one woman, and I asked God how it was. God said, when one man and one woman shine together, it makes the most perfect light. Many plants need that for their growing. Nevertheless, there are more kinds of plants in heaven than one, and they need many kinds of light. And one from among the people came running towards me. And when he came near, it seemed to me that he and I had played together when we were little children, and that we had been born on the same day. And I told God what I felt. God said, All men feel so in heaven when another comes towards them. And he who ran towards me held my hand, and led me through the bright lights. And when we came among the trees, he sang aloud, and his companion answered. And it was a woman, and he showed me to her. She said, He must have water, and she took some in her hands and fed me. I had been afraid to drink of the water in hell and they gathered fruit for me, and gave it me to eat. They said, We shone long to make it ripen, and they laughed together as they saw me eat it. The man said, He is very weary, he must sleep, for I had not dared to sleep in hell. And he laid my head on his companion's knee, and spread her hair out over me. I slept and all the while in my sleep I thought I heard the birds calling across me. And when I woke, it was like early morning, with the dew on everything. And the man took my hand and led me to a hidden spot among the rocks. The ground was very hard, but out of it were sprouting tiny plants, and there was a little stream running. He said, This is a garden we are making. No one else knows of it. We shine here every day. See, the ground has cracked with our shining, and this little stream is bursting out. See, the flowers are growing. And he climbed on the rocks and picked from above two little flowers with dew on them, and gave them to me, and I took one in each hand. My hands shone as I held them. He said, This garden is for all when it is finished and he went away to his companion, and I went out into the great pathway. And as I walked in the light, I heard a loud sound of much singing, and when I came nearer I saw one with closed eyes, singing, and his fellows were standing round him, and the light on the closed eyes was brighter than anything I had seen in heaven. I asked one who it was, and he said, Hush! our singing bird. And I asked why the eyes shone so, and he said, They cannot see, and we have kissed them till they shone so. And the people gathered closer round him. And when I went a little further, I saw a crowd crossing among the trees of light with great laughter. When they came close, I saw they carried one without hands or feet and the light came from the maimed limbs so bright that I could not look at them. And I said to one, What is it? He answered, This is our brother who once fell and lost his hands and feet, and since then he cannot help himself, but we have touched the maimed stumps so often that now they shine brighter than anything in heaven. We pass him on that he may shine on things that need much heat. No one is allowed to keep him long, he belongs to all. And they went on among the trees. I said to God, This is a strange land. I had thought blindness and maimedness were great evils. Here men make them to a rejoicing. God said, Didst thou then think that love had need of eyes and hands? and I walked down the shining way with palms on either hand. I said to God, Ever since I was a little child and sat alone and cried, 
i have dreamed of this land and now i will not go away again i will stay here and shine and i began to take off my garments that i might shine as others in that land but when i looked down i saw my body gave no light i said to god how is it god said is there no dark blood in your heart is it bitter against none and i said yes and i thought now is the time when i will tell god that which i have been meaning to tell him all along how badly my fellow men have treated me how they have misunderstood me how i have intended to be magnanimous and generous to them and they and i began to tell god but when i looked down all the flowers were withering under my breath and i was silent and god called me to come up higher and i gathered my mantle about me and followed him and the rocks grew higher and steeper on every side and we came at last to a place where a great mountain rose whose top was lost in the clouds and on its side i saw men working and they picked at the earth with huge picks and i saw that they laboured mightily and some laboured in companies but most laboured singly and i saw the drops of sweat fall from their foreheads and the muscles of their arms stood out with labour and i said i had not thought in heaven to see men labour so and i thought of the garden where men sang and loved and i wondered that any should choose to labour on that bare mountain side and i saw upon the foreheads of the men as they worked a light and the drops which fell from them as they worked had light and i asked god what they were seeking for and god touched my eyes and i saw that what they found were small stones which had been too bright for me to see before and i saw that the light of the stones and the light of the men's foreheads was the same and i saw that when one found a stone he passed it on to his fellow and he to another and he to another no man kept the stone he found and at times they gathered in great company about where a large stone was found and raised a great shout so that the sky rang then they worked on again and i asked god what they did with the stones they found at last then god touched my eyes again to make them stronger and i looked and at my feet was a mighty crown the light streamed out from it god said each stone as they find it is set here and the crown was wrought according to a marvellous pattern one pattern ran through all yet each part was different i said to god how does each man know where to set his stone so that the pattern is worked out god said because in the light his forehead sheds each man sees faintly outlines that full crown and i said but how is it that each stone is joined along its edges to its fellows so that there is no seam anywhere god said the stones are alive they grow and i said but what does each man gain by his working god said he sees his outline filled i said but those stones which are last set cover those which were first and those will again be covered by those which come later god said they are covered but not hid the light is the light of all without the first no last and i said to god when will this crown be ended and god said look up i looked up and i saw the mountain tower above me but its summit i could not see it was lost in the clouds god said no more and i looked at the crown then a longing seized me like the passion of a mother for the child whom death has taken like the yearning of a friend for the friend whom life has buried like the hunger of dying eyes for a life that is slipping like the thirst of a soul for love at its first spring waking 
so but fiercer was the longing in me i cried to god i too will work here i too will set stones in the wonderful pattern it shall grow beneath my hand and if it be that labouring here for years i should not find one stone at least i will be with the men that labour here i shall hear their shout of joy when each stone is found i shall join in their triumph i shall shout among them i shall see the crown grow so great was my longing as i looked at the crown i thought a faint light fell from my forehead also god said do you not hear the singing in the gardens i said no i hear nothing i see only the crown and i was dumb with longing i forgot all the flowers of the lower heaven and the singing there and i ran forward and threw my mantle on the earth and bent to seize one of the mighty tools which lay there i could not lift it from the earth god said where hast thou earned the strength to raise it take up thy mantle and i took up my mantle and followed where god called me but i looked back and i saw the crown burning my crown that i had loved higher and higher we climbed and the air grew thinner not a tree or plant was on the bare rocks and the stillness was unbroken my breath came hard and quick and the blood crept within my fingertips i said to god is this heaven god said yes it is the highest and still we climbed i said to god i cannot breathe so high god said because the air is pure and my head grew dizzy and as i climbed the blood burst from my fingertips then we came out upon a lonely mountain top no living being moved there but far off on a solitary peak i saw a lonely figure standing whether it were man or woman i could not tell for partly it seemed the figure of a woman but its limbs were the mighty limbs of a man i asked god whether it was man or woman god said in the least heaven sex reigns supreme in the higher it is not noticed but in the highest it does not exist and i saw the figure bend over its work and labour mightily but what it laboured at i could not see i said to god how came it here god said by a bloody stare step by step it mounted from the lowest hell and day by day as hell grew further and heaven no nearer it hung alone between two worlds hour by hour in that bitter struggle its limbs grew larger till there fell from it rag by rag the garments which it started with drops fell from its eyes as it strained them each step it climbed was wet with blood then it came out here and i thought of the garden where the men sang with their arms round one another and the mountainside where they worked in company and i shuddered and i said is it not terribly alone here god said it is never alone i said what has it for all its labour i see nothing return to it then god touched my eyes and i saw stretched out beneath us the plains of heaven and hell and all that was within them god said from that lone height on which he stands all things are open to him is clear the shining in the garden he sees the flower break forth and the stream sparkle no shout is raised upon the mountain side but his ear may hear it he sees the crown grow and the light shoot from it all hell is open to him he sees the paths mount upwards to him hell is the seed ground from which heaven springs he sees the sap ascending and i saw the figure bend over its work and the light from its face fell upon it and i said to god what is it making 
and God said, Music, and he touched my ears, and I heard it. And after a long while I whispered to God, This is heaven. And God asked me why I was crying, but I could not answer for joy. And the face turned from its work, and the light fell upon me. Then it grew so bright I could not see things separately, and which were God or the man or I, I could not tell. We were all blended. I cried to God, Where are you? But there was no answer, only music and light. Afterwards, when it had grown so dark again that I could see things separately, I found that I was standing there wrapped tight in my old brown earthly cloak, and God and the man were separated from each other and from me. I did not dare say I would go and make music beside the man. I knew I could not reach even to his knee, nor move the instrument he played. But I thought I would stand there on my little peak and sing an accompaniment to that great music. And I tried. But my voice failed. It piped and quavered. I could not sing that tune. I was silent. Then God pointed to me that I should go out of heaven. And I cried to God, O oh, let me stay here, if indeed it be, as I know it is, that I am not great enough to sing upon the mountain, nor strong enough to labour on its side, nor bright enough to shine and love within the garden, at least let me go down to the great gateway. Humbly I will kneel there sweeping, and as the saved pass in, I will see the light upon their faces, I shall hear the singing in the garden and the shout upon the hillside god said it may not be he pointed and i cried if i may not stay in heaven then let me go down to hell and i will grasp the hands of men and women there and slowly holding one another's hands we will work our way upwards still god pointed and I threw myself upon the earth and cried, Earth is so small, so mean, it is not meet a soul should see heaven and be cast out again. And God laid his hand on me and said, Go back to earth, that which you seek is there. I awoke. It was morning. The silence and darkness of the night were gone. Through my narrow attic window I saw the light of another day. I closed my eyes and turned towards the wall. I could not look upon the dull grey world. In the streets below men and women streamed past by hundreds. I heard the beat of their feet on the pavement. Men on their way to business, servants on errands, boys hurrying to school, weary professors pacing slowly the old street prostitutes men and women dragging their feet wearily after last night's debauch artists with quick impatient footsteps tradesmen for orders children to seek for bread i heard the stream beat by and at the alley's mouth at the street corner a broken barrel organ was playing sometimes it quavered and almost stopped then went on again like a broken human voice. I listened. My heart scarcely moved. It was as cold as lead. I could not bear the long day before me, and I tried to sleep again. Yet still I heard the feet upon the pavement, and suddenly I heard them cry loud as they beat, We are seeking! We are seeking! We are seeking! And the broken barrel organ at the street corner sobbed, the beautiful, the beautiful, the beautiful. And my heart, which had been dead, cried out with every throb, Love, truth, the beautiful, the beautiful. It was the music I had heard in heaven that I could not sing there. And fully I awoke. Upon the faded quilt across my bed, a long yellow streak of pale London sunlight was lying. It fell through my narrow attic window. I laughed. I rose. I was glad. 
the long day was before me paris and london end of section 9 and end of dreams by olive schreiner